Hi, everyone. Uh, we're here today to talk about the um, newly issued fintech law uh, that has been uh, awaited by uh, all the uh, players, financial players in, in the Egyptian market. Uh, I'm uh, pleased to be joined uh, with Zainab Shohdi from our um, COCOM and banking department. Hi, Zainab. Hi, Ihib. Hey, Thank you for inviting us. Um, so, Zainab, as, as part of the um, Egyptian government plan uh, for financial inclusion that was, I think, issued in 2016, um, subsequently the new banking law uh, has been issued in 2020, if I'm not mistaken, um, and addressed for the first time the uh, fintech industry and, um, and how it will be regulated. And then <clears throat> the FRA also uh, issued the new fintech law that uh, relates to the fintech players in uh, non-banking financial services. Um, why don't you give us a brief on, on, on the law and your thoughts about it? As, as you just mentioned, it's, uh, the fintech law is coming into play as part of the, of the bigger plan for the financial inclusion. Um, and it's one of the priorities for the 2030 uh, vision of the, of the Egyptian government. Um, and although we see it uh, coming uh, in play a bit late, but it's always late, better than never. Um, so from 2014-16 up, up to date, uh, we have seen uh, uh, financial technology in general is being uh, deployed uh, in the market and across uh, across the globe in general. And that uh, increase or surge in the use of financial inclusion was was very much uh, seen during the pandemic and the fact that people had to opt for more technological uh, based services rather than the the, the in person or 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 any service that includes physical contact or physical relations in general so if 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 we check the 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 central bank of egypt uh, report issued earlier this year for the fintech landscape uh, we have seen, for example, in 2014, only two fintech companies in Egypt. In 2016, those became four. And then from 2016 until end of 2021, we are now having almost 112 fintech companies. And if this reflects anything, it reflects how financial inclusion and financial technology uh, must be given very uh, proper attention and must be regulated to enhance uh, this and, and, and I see also eagerness from from venture capitalists and other investors to to really invest in in the fintech space. Um, so I mean, we have been personally extremely busy with, with venture capital work on on fintech companies. Um, so I, I I totally agree that this was much needed and and came in late. Um, however, I mean, there's a lot of confusion on what is regulated by the CBE and what's regulated by the Financial Regulatory Authority and who has. Uh, the regulatory supervisory power over what segment. So we have the payment services and the banking, whether the digital banking or agency banking services and, and, and the like. And then we have the non-banking financial um, services like so nano financing, micro financing and, and, and other non-banking uh, services. Um, how do you see the distinction being made? So the, the Central Bank of Egypt being the leader of, of the initiative they started with um, issuing regulations pertaining to payment services, payment aggregation, facilitation, and mobile money in general. So the, the CBU was taking the lead uh, on that end when it comes to banking-related services or payment-related services. So we had a gap for uh, financial technology when employed for the non-banking financial institution or the non-banking financial services. So when the, the, the banking law was issued, it, it had the lead on um, uh, introducing that or recognizing that there is financial technology that can be employed and they introduced the, rec, uh, the so-called rec tech that we can employ regulatory uh, technology uh, for overseeing uh, companies in general. Um, they are welcoming startups to engage in uh, uh, online banking applications as software providers or, or um, um, outsourcing activities for banks to support um, um, the technology of the bank the banks are, are used and that was also mirrored and in the, in the digital uh, digital banks and digital funding etc and given that the FRA is already part of of the, the board of directors of of the CBE and it has to to have a say uh, uh, in the regulatory framework it, it makes uh, very good sense that that now they are coordinating uh, everything so when the fintech 
and the new fintech law is issued for the non-banking financial services, it only introduces uh, if the services are being provided through technology platforms and these are limited to non-banking financial services and if anything is related to banking, it has to stay under the, the auspices of the, of the Central Bank of Egypt. So we are seeing a good coordination between them as to who regulates what and who is the supervising authority for, for what. I think that the good thing is that the, uh, the FRA is also represented on the board of directors of, of the Central Bank of Egypt and I'm sure that that representation means that there is a, a continuous dialogue between the two regulators on, on who will be in charge of, of what aspect of fintech. Um, do you think that the law is, is conclusive? Do we still need further regulations to be issued from the FRA? Um, does the general uh, capital markets law and other relevant laws that were already um, governing the um, conventional uh, non-banking financial service institutions um, would this still apply? The same capital requirements, uh, same ownership restrictions. So for, for NBFIs, you, you have a restriction on ownership. The 25% of the ownership generally needs to be for a financial institution, whether a bank or a holding company or, or others. Um, do you think that the law covers that or it's not yet clear? The, the law is a step forward for sure, but it's falling short in, in so many aspects. And I don't think it's it's a conclusive one because there are so many aspects that are not addressed altogether in the law. So we are not sure if um, NBFS is, uh, wants to engage as, uh, through fintech uh, in general. Are they subject to the same establishment requirements? For example, as for example, if we are speaking about insurance companies, are they subject to the same requirements, same reporting obligations, or they would have? Um, much less or lessened uh, obligations and regulatory and compliance obligations in general. So these aspects was never was not not addressed altogether in the law. So we are not we are not entirely sure. Because basically, again, uh, I think the law is issued to to facilitate uh, uh, investments in fintech and, and open up the market. So and and the non banking financial service uh, sector is a heavily regulated sector. There are a lot of capital requirements, a lot of ownership requirements, a lot of reporting requirements, and definitely for good reasons. Um, but again, if, if the same type of heavy regulations apply to fintech, do you believe that this will restrict uh, the expansion of, will, of the fintech? It, it will sure do. It will sure do. Everyone is having a, um, um, an idea that most probably they will have requirements that are a bit different than those for the conventional. Uh, non-banking financial services just to to encourage the industry itself and the startups that want to engage in the financial technology platforms in general. Um, so if, if they apply the same requirements, it could be a bit detrimental to the expansion uh, in that in that industry. Do you get the same feeling that I have that the regulator is taking the right steps but is always a bit delayed? So when the banking law has been issued, they, the banking law sp spoke about Fintech uh, spoke about digital banking um, and, and, and other uh, relevant banking services. Um, but to date, they have not yet issued the executive regulations of the law. They have not issued any regulation that, that actually would come in and, 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 and put the rules and regulations required for these new type of banking services to come into the market. How fast should the regulator be uh, acting? I think they, they need to they need to be much more faster than that because once the, the, the banking law was issued and again the, the fintech law was issued, everyone, especially the international players, were trying to expand and explore the market. So once they hear that there are no regulations are issued today, it's a bit uh, uh, a showstopper for them to engage in the market without understanding the full regulatory environment or how the regulations would address the requirements, etc. So definitely it, it, it hinders the, the expansion and the the foreign investments in that sector in, uh, in Egypt. Uh, again, when we talk about startups in, in fintech, uh, a big part of, of their financing comes from convertibles, whether safes or, or KISS convertible notes. And again, it's not yet clear uh, if the ownership restrictions will come into play, how will that impact uh, the financing going forward? Because again, if you have investors, venture capital investors, uh, coming in and putting in notes in these type of companies, um, 
and and then the conversion would be subject to a regulatory approval that would definitely impact the financing required for for these companies um again i'm not sure if the regulator actually figures this out or is there something proactive that the fintech uh, leaders should uh, should start and speak to the regulator about these issues in advance because again the fintech law does not have an executive regulation and most probably will not have an executive regulation and the fra will continue uh, issuing board resolutions or other resolutions that would regulate the fintech uh, sector under uh, under the fra um so what are your thoughts should should the industry uh, leaders be speaking more and more uh, to the regulator about about their needs i i think they should because the the, the fintech law just highlighted that um, as part of the requirements in general, that the applicant will have to disclose the, the, the ownership structure and ultimate ownership. So, but whether that ownership would require, uh, similar to the conventional NBFS, that they will have to have 25% of financial institutions on board or not, this is not clear. So, if that requirement will not be in place or uh, having to get an approval for the UBOs or the indirect ownership of the fintech, uh, this is very important to 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 have a, an understanding and to speak with with the regulator and the, to to if if they are having in mind to restrict the ownership or to require certain prior approvals, they will need to rethink about it because it will be detrimental to the ongoing investments of of the private equity funds in that sector. Uh, carrying on, I think we need to uh, sh- uh, shed a bit of light on on the new. Um, uh, fintech sectors that are not the traditional non-banking uh, services that the new law covered. Uh, can you give us a, a bit of an insight on, on this? The, the, the fintech law, um, in addition to the conventional uh, uh, services, non-bank financial services, uh, the like of um, consumer financing, uh, nano financing or nano lending, they have also addressed the, uh, uh, the robo advisory, which are basically uh, platforms that financial institutions or non-bank financial institutions can use to uh, uh, evaluate the credit risk and the profile of, of their customers. So as part of moving towards more um, technology-based services, so the, the, the credit risk and the profile of, of, of the customers who are applying for any so services. So basically credit rating, KYC. And, exactly, and... exactly will be uh, held with, with the robo advisory. So basically we can find financial technology companies only established to provide the robo advisory uh, as a platform, as a service to all non-bank financial services and possibly to, to banking sectors as well. So the FinTech law actually regulated non-banking financial services companies that will work through the fintech uh, or or electronic platforms and also um, complementary services that they would need definitely because the law also addresses is, is addressing the the outsourcing services and the definition of outsourcing services is very broad they were basically saying uh, that any any entity that would be providing any ancillary or complementary services for non-banking financial services based on technology they would also require a license the type of these services are, are not yet clear, and and those should come uh, should be highlighted by the regulations of of the FRA. So basically, if a company is providing software as a service to non bank financial services, if if um, IT infrastructure for a certain platform, those could be deemed as outsourcing entities and would require would be required to have an FRA license as well. So. Uh, the, the the scope of the regulation itself and the number of of entity that would require to come in compliance with the law is is a bit broad at this stage. And again, given the fact that fintech is led by young entrepreneurs and um, a lot of startups uh, are mainly working in the fintech uh, area. Um, do you think the regulator did enough, whether under the banking law or under the new fintech law, to give certain exemptions and waivers for these startups from uh, whether being over-regulated or capital requirement, heavy capital requirements or heavy financing fees? Actually, the, the, the legislator, uh, when issuing the, the, the banking law and the fintech law, there was uh, obvious recognition of, of the startups and their input in the financial technology sector in general. So um, under the banking law, they have introduced 
uh, uh, the fa- uh, certain waivers or exemptions that can be issued by the CBE for startups engaging in the and fintech related activities. Um, it could be waiver on 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 the license fees, uh, lesser or or much uh, um, softer requirements in terms of capital, in terms of uh, corporate governance or compliance in general. And the fintech law has followed route, so we are finding that they have also recognized the startups. Uh, they are giving full waiver on on the license fee, which is fifty thousand Egyptian pounds. Um, they are introducing much less capital requirements, so they basically can have only two hundred fifty thousand Egyptian pounds. So they they might not be required to to uh, follow the same requirement for the conventional uh, conventional non bank financial services or other. Uh, uh, players and in, in the fintech market. Uh, thank you uh, for your time on this and your thoughts uh, and questions. Um, hope this was helpful to everyone. And if you have any queries, uh, please reach out to myself or Ehib through email or through our pages. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.